Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota, and I'm here to bring you another live paper crafting class here on YouTube and or Facebook, wherever you're watching from. A big welcome to you if this is your first time, and it was fun to read the comments before I went live. Um, lots of you chiming in from the U.S., from different states, Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, Minnesota, Florida, Michigan, and then we have somebody from Norway. Awesome. So, And Costa Rica. There's Linda. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I have a fun fold card for you today. This card is... Um, one that I got the idea from, from Nancy Reynolds. Now, Nancy Reynolds is a um, demonstrator uh, in my group, and she sent me a card. Um, she got the idea from, I believe the last name is Egan, Karen Egan from Crafty Karen. Um, and so she sent me a link to, um, or she sent me the name. I found the link to the video. And so I do have that in the description of my video. So if you want to see the original card that Nancy um, uh, got her idea from, then uh, you can click on that link. And those of you on Facebook, I will definitely transfer all the information that I'm talking about in the description <laughs> over to the video when I'm done with the live so that you can see all of these things too. Because in that description of the video, you're also going to see a link to my blog post. You're going to see a link to the supplies I used and those sort of things. Um, again, that will get transferred over to the vid to the to the um, recorded Facebook live afterwards. Now today is a special day because it's the first Wednesday of the month so that means that my all-star tutorial group is hopping. We are doing a blog hop today and all of our projects are centered around the Abigail um, Rose Abigail Rose suite. <laughs> so we're going to be using that particular suite. I'm going to show that to you in the catalog here. Why don't I bring you down to my desktop right now so you can see that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Hang on just a second. Okay, I think there we go. All right, so this is the Abigail Rose Suite. Um, you can see it's made up of a stamp set, uh, a set of dies that coordinates with it. They're kind of miniature little version right here. <laughs> you can see them better in the back of the catalog. And then there's um, the paper and the ribbon. Now you don't have to purchase the suite all at once, but when you use one order number, you can get all of those items all at once. Now I'm using everything but the ribbon. I did not get the ribbon. I couldn't find it in my stash, and so obviously I'm not using it today. But this is the card that um, Nancy Reynolds gave me. So you can see it's already got a little fold trying to pop up here in the corner. So good morning from Idaho. Hi, Linda. <laughs> um, so you can see this corner here pops up. Um, I just came up with my own name because Karen had called it just a fun fold card. And um, so, yeah, I what did I call it again? I called it the corner open, cor corner open fun fold car card. So um, there we go. There is the card. Pretty easy, right? But it's just kind of got this wow factor when you open it up because it's got such a fun fold to it. So we're going to do this card today. Now Karen's card was a square card. So that might be a little bit simpler to start out with because then you don't have to think too much about the direction of your paper. Um, if you do have a directional paper, then you'll want to keep that in mind. You want to make sure that if you have a direction showing this way that flowers or whatever are going upward, um, same thing on the inside. So pay attention to the direction when we cut our cardstock. Thank you, Eileen. <laughs> yes, I'm still sporting the straight hair. Um, it's, it's been an interesting process. You know, that's life though, right? We just go through changes. Okay. But we're going to start with some coloring. And before we do that, let me just bring in a stamp and my ink. This is my Tuxedo Black Memento ink. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, kind of far away from the work area. And we're going to take a stamp. And I didn't put the label on the back side yet. I'm very, I'm very quick when I stamp. So I don't take a lot of time to put labels on the back, but you, they do come with labels. We're just going to stamp that onto our shimmery white cardstock. I'm using shimmery white because I feel that this neutral color goes the best with the Abigail Rose designer paper. Now the Abigail Rose designer paper has, it doesn't really have like a white, crisp white kind of white in it. Um, and it's not really vanilla. Now, maybe a couple of the sheets are, but I felt like this one was an, an in-between color. So the shimmery white is what I'm using. And if you glance just kind of at an angle, you can see little flecks of shimmer in it. It's very subtle. 
Um, I have already stamped a rose also in, that's the Abigail rose, obviously, right? I've already stamped the rose and that color. And so I'm gonna be coloring this one. We're just gonna set this one aside. Um, before we color though, I think we should die cut. And before we do all of that, I am going to give you the supply list or show you the, the PDF. So let me quick bring that over. I just dove right in, didn't I? It's just so much fun. Okay, hang on. So here we go. There is the supply list and um, the measurements that you'll need. You can see the card closed and open. Will it be posted somewhere, Diana asked? Yes, it will. Um, in the description of my video, which you're on YouTube, I can see, there is a link to my blog post. And that blog post will go live at 5 p.m. Central Time, so six hours from now, because that's when the hop occurs. So you gotta wait it out a little bit today. But once 5 p.m. hits, this blog post will go live. You'll have photos of all the um, of the you'll have lots of photos of the card you'll have the measurements in there you'll have the supply list you'll also have um, a link to this PDF so you don't have to do a screenshot right now um, you'll be able to just click on it and it'll download onto your computer so yes a handy dandy one page reference right it has the date it has the name the photos measurements and supplies if you take a look at the measurements um, the, I did have the, um, the measurements going, uh, the score measurements are two and three quarter inches. Um, I'm going to give you a couple options when you score that main base paper. And again, think of the direction. And then there's also another diagonal score line that I didn't write in there because um, it would have taken up lots of room to describe it. But you always know that you can come back to these videos. Just find that date on that PDF and you can go back to my blog post and find it. So... All right. Oh, and one more thing I want to mention too. Um, my original site that I do my supply list from was not working last night when I was writing this up. So today these little things are not clickable, just so you know. Um, but you can look them up by going to the online store. And if you aren't familiar with my website, oh my gosh, I'm going too fast today. This is just too much. Hello from Germany. Krista, how are you? Um, stampyourartout.com is my website and if you want to shop for any products you can find the shop button in that um, website lots of different places where I have the shop button so it's pretty easy to find okay let's go back to the desktop and before we die cut I just want to introduce you to three of the products from that suite we'll zoom out a bit because it's really close <laughs> all right we have the cottage rose stamp set you can see there's lots of different sentiments in there, fun fonts, um, lots of images. This one, this one, this one, and this one can all be die cut from the die set that coordinates. And this is the Cottage Flowers um, die set. So you've got your frame dies and these die cut around um, those guys here. Here's the other one we're going to do the, the leaves with. Um, you've got this one, which die cuts uh, this portion right down here do you see that and then also can die cut that flower right there but what's wonderful about this is it lines up with one of the designs in the designer paper yay then all of these here are detail dies i use the detail dies in my exclusive tutorial project that you can access by going to my website today um, you can access it anytime, actually. But it's the Abigail Rose All-Star Tutorial Bundle, and my card features the detailed dies in it. It's also a fun, it's an interactive card, so you'll want to check that out. I'm going to put these aside. We're going to bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. The Big Boss, although you could, no, you probably want to use the Big Boss on this one because this one has pretty big dies on it. So we're going to set it in this direction. We've got our layers here. We've got platform number one, die adapter number two, cutting plate number three. I'm going to stack those all together. My scratchiest plate is on the bottom because I like to have my dies with the cutting side down. So let's line these two up first. I'm just going to put them onto my machine here, my platforms, and I'm going to bring in some sticky notes because I, I want these to stay in place. So we're just going to look at the edge of the design, make sure that it looks all centered, and then we're just going to put this sticky note across one section there to hold it down. Same thing with this one. 
Again, make sure that you can see that whole image within the frame portion of the die and then just put your sticky note down on top. Now, if you still have magnetic plates, that sort of thing, you can definitely use that. Those are helpful. All right, so we just crank it on through. I love the stamp and cut and bus machine in that if you're left-handed, you can crank with the other hand. <laughs> Did you know? All right, so there we go. There's our set of leaves. And then we have this flower all cut and ready to go. We're going to color now with our blends markers. So let me trash this. Actually, you know what? I forgot to introduce you to the paper. Let me introduce you to the paper because we're going to die cut a portion of the paper too. So these are the six double-sided sheets. You get two of each in the Abigail Rose suite. These, by the way, can be die cut with that die that I just used. This one here is the one we're going to die cut um, with the larger die. Then you've got these beautiful um, subtle flowers, some petal pink stripes, tiny little flowers inside dots, more subtle flowers. On the flip side of these six double-sided designs, we have these. So let me straighten them out a bit here. We have these nice dark flowers here, um, black on kind of that shimmery white color, right? And then we have the white flowers against a um, brown background, a gray background with a floral twist to it. Then we've got this um, kind of like a ledger here and then another uh, floral background. So they're kind of like um, monochromatic designs. Now here are the colors that you get. You get basic black, crumb cake, early espresso, petal pink, smoky slate, and very vanilla. This paper would be awesome for um, like a wedding. So if you have um, wedding cards that you're making, hang on, I have to get a sheet here. If you have wedding cards that you're making, I really think that these have that very elegant look to them. I wanted to pull in one of the sheets that I already started cutting into so that I didn't mess up one of my new sheets. In fact, I need my snips too. <laughs> so we're gonna pull this away for just a second. We're gonna bring this over and we're gonna line it up here somewhere. Let's see here. Where should we line this one up? We don't need all the flowers. So I think I'm gonna do this section here. So I'm just gonna trim around, trying not to get in the way of too many other areas because we could probably die cut all of those, right? Let me line that up again. Looks like it's coming in through here. Okay, so yes, lots of pretty florals in this. The opportunity to color because they're outline images. Okay, so now we can take and bring back our machine. Slide these back over this way because that's what I'm used to. You can die cut in the other direction, by the way. And now we'll line that up. I'm going to grab another sticky note. And we really probably only need one sticky note, although I may use two here. I'm just going to put it right about there. That looks like it's holding in place. Another tip is if when you bring this down, kind of angle it. So you're, you know, here's the flat one. You're just angling it in and then placing it down. And that way you don't disturb your dies. Okay. Now this is going to make a little bit bigger of a mess. It's going to make a mess. The other one didn't make a mess. This one's going to make a little bit of a mess because we have tiny little die cut pieces coming off of here. All those tiny little leaves. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to lift this up and off. You can see there's some pieces in there. You can take and poke those out of there with our take your pick tool. We'll just do that here. There we go. That's clean. And then if we lift this up and off, you can see just all these little tiny leaves came out of there too. Do you see that? Pretty cool. So I'm gonna set that aside because we're gonna use that. I'm gonna trade places with just a piece of scrap paper here because I am going to color. I'm gonna color with you right now. Yay. Let's bring in this design, the Abigail Rose. 
and we're going to bring in some blends markers and I'm going to zoom in a bit here okay you know who I forgot to introduce oh my goodness you guys I just seriously I want to color so badly today um, let me grab my glasses here because we may need to um, we may need to look closer at what we're doing <laughs> so oh that's not gonna work we'll just we'll just color and pray that we do well from far away so I want to introduce to you two people um, we have uh, Trisha Josephs and she is on YouTube right now with me her name Trisha Josephs has the wrench symbol next to her um, so that when you see her commenting she kind of stands out and so I want to want you to say hello to her she is my moderator and that person there Trisha is able to answer questions for you so if you have a question you can't find something I'm not seeing your comment and you need it answered or acknowledged right away or whatever just tag her and the way that you do that is you start typing with the a with a circle around it so at Trisha Josephs and her name will pop up once you start typing it T-R-I-C-I-A um, you can click on her and it will tag her the other person I want to introduce is Lisa Marshall and she is hanging out on Facebook with those of you on Facebook um, she's there to answer questions there her name does not stand out so you won't you know it won't be something easy to find but she's watching all the comments and trying to answer as we go and she can tag you she can you know tag you in a in an answer so that you can see your answer okay so what I'm doing is coloring with blends markers do you guys know what blends markers are if you're new to paper crafting um, Stampin' Up! has this line of alcohol based markers called Stampin' Blends and every set of markers comes in a pair we have a light and a dark of the same color and basically they're just lighter and darker it doesn't mean that it's light a light version of you know um, the actual ink pad doesn't mean it's a darker version of the actual ink pad it's just a lighter version and a darker version and when you combine them you can get a medium version so what I'm doing is I'm coloring in on my shimmery white cardstock that has been stamped with tuxedo black memento ink because you want to use the tuxedo black I'm coloring in a few petals at a time I'm starting with the light and when I pop off my cap I hold my this is I just got in the habit of doing this because you don't want to bend the tip it's very fragile the tip of your of your pen so I hold it like this and I pop my cap off this way some people go like this and they yank it off and what happens is if you do that see I don't even want to do it that way if you do that you can accidentally you know bend your tip as you're pulling it off so please be careful also make sure that when you're not using a marker that you have capped it because it's alcohol based so it's going to dry out quickly if you leave it loose or uncapped um, I'm leaving some white spots on here so I've started with my light one and then I come back with the dark one and I color in where you have shaded areas maybe the stamp image sometimes shows shaded areas so you can see that I've got the darker spots on there now and now I'm going to go back um, and this is optional on my petal pink color that I'm using here it's blending right away I really don't need to do this but if you want to you can then blend the two colors together so it goes light then dark and then in between with the light one to kind of blend them you'll see that more so when I do a leaf so let's do a leaf right now by the way you have two tips on your markers you have the brush tip which is what I typically prefer and then you have the fine tip we're going to be using the fine tip on the darker of the two greens the green color that I'm using right now is granny apple green it's a nice leaf color kind of a spring cheerful green and I'm using I'm um, leaving some white patches here just for shine as if the um, leaf is you know kind of highlighted by the Sun I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here okay so I've got my light color down left a little white spot for shine and then oh yeah I was gonna use the other end here I'm gonna use my pointy tip so the pointy tip is more like a bullet tip um, and it helps you to get into those crevices a little bit better um, you can also do lines with it so now you can see right now a big difference between the two colors on my leaf right <laughs> thank you Jenny <laughs> 
Um, so then I come in and in between those two colors, I just do a light swirling motion with my light marker again. And you can see already how you can still see the dark areas, but you can see the light areas and the dark areas flowing together. So it's more of a like a, a blend. It's a blend. Hence the name blends markers, right? It's a beautiful green, Christy. I totally agree with you. Um, for my, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm using so saffron. I was going to say daffodil delight. For my um, yellow color, you can use either end. Um, I'm going to use this end here. And I'm not using the light and dark because this is really, it's such a um, small area that you're not going to see much of a difference. Plus, I'm kind of adding the color in areas where I've already got like massive amount of stamping, like little lines in there and little dots in there. So you're not going to really see much of it. I just wanted a hint of yellow. So when that is done, you're going to end up with something like this. I was smart, you guys. I <laughs> made sure that I did a, did one ahead of time. So I can finish that later for another card. Let's set that aside. Blends markers do smell good, but you don't want to be inhaling them for too long, by the way. <laughs> All right, so there we go. We, those are our pieces. Now you can color this too. In fact, you can color all of these if you really want to put some time into it. Um, but I kind of wanted that spotlighting kind of look where the main floral piece is the part that pops. So in this card, you can see that that one really stands out. These back here being white and black do not distract um, or detract from the actual image that I want to have stand out. Now in Nancy's card, you can see here she used um, when she folded and she she got copied, you know, the same kind of design stuff as Karen had, but she's got um, panels. So she pan panel covered these four areas. And then um, when you open it up, there's the card message. So I kind of wanted to use more of the inside. And I also wanted to use designer paper so that we'd see a design throughout the whole part. Hi, Kim. How are you? My next door neighbor. She's not far from me. <laughs> um, so when you open it up, you have designs going throughout. I also wanted to make use of this space here. So you've got this, you've got this, you've got your design on there. So that's the advantage to designer paper. Plus designer paper is thinner. It's slightly thinner. So it will take off some of the thickness and the weight when you're going to mail it. Now I still, I really layered this up and I added dimensionals. So it's not like my card is going to be any easier to mail than Nancy's. <laughs> but I did want to point out that designer paper, paper you know, the, the advantages. Um, also with my card, I decided to tuck things in so that when the card is closed, it looks like there's this massive layer of flowers. And then when it's open, you don't see it, of course, but you see how I just kind of made them look as if they were part of the bouquet. You don't notice them, though, because they disappear when you open them up. So even though they're not really fully extended throughout the card, it still works. Um, then you can see how my flower is kind of offset here. And this one is not. So when you open it up, you don't see any edge of anything. And on this one, you do. Well, do you see the back side of this? So we used another scrap. I used, we? <laughs> I used another scrap of this designer paper. And what I did is I pretended, well, I didn't really pretend. I just put it on top like this because I wanted the same, the same look on the other side. So this is the way I want to die cut. I'm going to bring my machine back in. And we're going to die cut another layer. I forgot. I forgot this step. So we're just going to die cut blade side down on top of the paper like this. We need our cutting mat. Hang on. I do have another one because I don't want to take off those flowers from the other sheet. And here's my other one. Oops. Okay. So yes, I cut one more layer of those flowers. Because, and why did I do that? I'll show you. It's not just because I want to see that designer paper all the way through, but it's going to cover up something. My catch-all table, right? <laughs> I love it. You guys are all saying hi to each other. So watch this. 
there's the designer paper now. And look at that. That's what happens when you color with blends. So when I first made my card, I forgot about that. That's why you use, you know, grid paper too, or scrap paper when you're coloring, because you don't want the ink to soak through onto your table. But when I first made the card, I had to take this piece back off and layer it. So we're going to do that right now. Let's grab our multi-purpose liquid glue, which I've transferred to one of those precision um, tip bottles shake it to the tip here and I'm just going to come around and add a line of glue I love these precision tip bottles you guys I'm addicted to them <laughs> all right so there now that's all set if you wanted to too you could offset it and have like a little shadow of that paper under there but um, I'm not going to because I'm going to try to make my card just like the one on the website Okay, so let's go ahead and start cutting our base so we can assemble this. We need a sheet of that designer paper. Direction, there's no direction to this. Um, I'm gonna show you this one. Where is it? There's another one in here that I started to do and then I changed my mind because I wanted to do a different, um, a different paper instead, but this one definitely has a direction. You can see that these flowers are kind of going upward. So this would be the way I would probably um, fold the card in like, like that, okay? Um, you could also do it this way, but now that I've done my score lines, it looks like these flowers are coming down. Although you could do that, right? You could have flowers going down. Okay, so we gotta cut our card, our, um, card base, and our card base is going to be seven by eight and three, um, eight and a quarter. Ooh, zoom out, Rachel. Okay, so the um, it's going to be portrait. So again, if you're thinking of your cardstock or your or your designer paper, I should say, and you have a direction, remember it's portrait if you want to get this look. So this is the seven inch, and this is the eight and a quarter. So I'll just set it in there like that, seven inches. Trim it all the way through. Save your scraps. These are big scraps, you guys. Eight and a quarter goes right there. And then we want a score line. And so we did look to see, you know, where's our design going. We want to score it obviously up here and we want to score it over here. So it's going to be two and three quarters from the top edge and two and three quarters from the left edge. Okay. Now, after you've done the scoring of two and three quarters from each of those edges, you're going to end up with a section here that is four and a quarter four and a quarter by, and I'm just going to fold these in so you can see the crease lines, four and a quarter by five and a half right in here. So if you want to and you forget that two and three quarter inch mark, you can just say to yourself, oh, I want to make sure that this goes in four and a quarter, so then you can score it again, and this goes in five and a half. <clears throat> okay, and that's how you can get those measurements. So now we can go ahead and use our bone folder give these some crisp creases open it up and score it again okay now we need to have that diagonal fold right here that allows us to fold it down like this now you could do it by hand look oh my gosh it's working with designer paper so easily could do it by hand if you want to you know just go like that and flatten it out or if you want the exact measurements the ruler is going to tell you to make a little pencil mark at five and a half inches. I'm going to grab, oh, this is the only pencil I have. I'm going to grab a sharper pencil, but okay. So I'm going to lay this up here, zoom in a bit. Decorate your envelope with a bit of a scrap. Awesome idea, Shirley. I am so bad at decorating my envelopes. Okay, so five and a half inches from this side. Make a little mark up there and five and a half inches from this side. So you're going from the upper left corner, five and a half inches in, five and a half inches down. Make the mark right at the edge, and then you can come over and score. So everyone in my group loved this card so much. Again, thank you, Nancy, for sharing, um, that uh, I've already noticed that two of my um, people in our group have done some lives on this as well. Um, Cheryl Lee 
and Teresa Glow. So I'm going to have to put links to their videos so you can see their ideas too. And I loved how Nancy, um, not Nancy, I'm sorry. I love how Cheryl added a belly band to her designs. Um, cause this card, I mean, especially if you're doing it with the cardstock can pop open easily, right? You could also do Velcro or whatever. So now that we've scored that, we're going to fold it in the opposite direction and give it a good crease. And then we just pop our finger down like that and you can see it's ready to just close up. And then you can crease everything again, just to make sure that it's all reinforced and it's set to go. So let's do some stamping on our card base. Our card base is gonna have the words best wishes and it's going to be fab. Uh, where'd my ink, here it is. In the two different corners. One corner you're gonna see when it's actually um, closed and open and the other one you'll see only when it's open. So here is my shimmery white base that is four inches by five and a quarter and I'm going to stamp this. You know what? I think I'm going to stamp this one after I put it inside the card. This one I'm going to stamp now. And I'm, because I don't have the label on, <laughs> I'm going to check to make sure I've stamped it straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or it's going to stamp straight, I should say. Okay. So there's that. And then we're going to mount it onto our green. You know what? Let's not mount it onto our green yet. Okay, because those of you that have stamped a lot, you know, you know what could happen, right? <laughs> so we're just going to lay it onto our green. We're going to place this inside. If you ever have done mistakes with your stamping, you know that it's not good to adhere first. Always, and I'm just going to check here, always make sure that you stamp and then adhere. Because that way, if you smudge it or you stamp it crooked, you have, if I can flip it, the other side to use. But we don't have to worry about that because we did okay. Let's bring in the seal adhesive. Got some on the end of my finger there. <laughs> we'll place that onto this layer, which is five and three eighths. So it's just an eighth inch longer and um, four and an eighth in that direction. Sometimes I put a little dash of adhesive in each corner and sometimes I put a whole line. It just depends on my mood. I used to tell my people at my classes, yes, feel free to use lots of adhesive because then you'll need to get more. <laughs> oh, these pencil lines here. And I would say it that way too so they would laugh about it. But. You really only need a little in each corner. Okay, we've stamped with all of those, so I'm gonna set those aside. We need to bring in our scrap of vellum. The vellum scrap is something we're gonna punch. And then these two layers are gonna go on the outside and the inside. The inside one is gonna get some little flowers here, and I just did them with the multi-purpose liquid glue. Thank you, Lisa. Hey, Sandy. Um, so let's just take, let's do this one first. Um, add a little bit of adhesive back there. Let's grab, let's grab this flower. My fingernails aren't working. Put a little adhesive there. And then I think I used this one. I like to make my samples that I do just like the ones that you, you're going to see on the um, website when my blog post goes live. <laughs> so, okay, let's pick these all up with our three hands. We have three hands today, you guys. And I'm going to set that one here real carefully. And I'm going to set the one that's furthest off to the right down. And then this one goes in the middle. And we can kind of still shimmy them if we need to because we're using liquid glue. There, that looks good. That's going to go on the inside of the card. And that will go up here in this corner. And that piece is just under two and three quarter by two and three quarter, so it's two and uh, five eighths. Two and five eighths by two and five eighths. Okay, we do have some embellishments that we're gonna add, but we're gonna do that at the end. That's our champagne rhinestones. So let's keep this closed for just a second here. What pieces do we need? We need the flower piece that we just did. Ooh, that got a little darker when I stamped it. We need this piece that we, this is all coming from this portion of the designer paper, okay? 
Um, we need that piece. We need this one. We need the leaves that we just die cut also with our stamp. You can see how close these look. This is designer paper. This is the shimmery white. I mean, it's almost a perfect match of the neutral color, right? Um, we also have one more flower and that is coming from the bottom. And then the other things that we have are these fun little leaves here and they're done with a strip of vellum and the leaf punch or the, I'm sorry, it's not the leaf punch, it's the bow punch. It's one of my favorites. Keep the name straight in your head, Rachel. So I'm just gonna punch like that. And you notice how I did an angle? Because that way, when I come in and do the next set of leaves, I can kind of overlap the space that they were in. Oh, sorry, come down a little bit. So I can kind of overlap the space that they were in that way, right? And I do a strip too, because I don't necessarily use that one as much. That one is not as popular in my mind as the other one. I just really love this, <clears throat> this larger one. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> water break, water break. Cap this, by the way. Okay, we are ready to just add the rest of the doodads. This one I'm going to add with dimensionals. Oh yeah, we need this piece in there. So let's add this. We know it's going to get covered up in the bottom corner section here, so I can add it like that. This piece is two and a half by two and a half. And if I rub really hard, you can see the reason why you don't use adhesive with vellum. <laughs> Some adhesives. You can use adhesive underneath, but then you want to cover it. Or you want to take and use like sponged on multi-purpose glue all over the thing. So it's kind of like got this even adhesive look on it, you know. Okay, this is going to go next. We're going to use dimensionals for that. Do I not have my dimensionals out? I forgot my dimensionals too. You know what? I thought I was prepared today. <laughs> Doing pretty well though. We are not losing internet, are we? I'm going to pull this away so I can see how that's going on my screen. So I'm just going to set one in the corner and then I think I'll put maybe, maybe I'll do like a little tri triangle um, situation there with my, with my dimensionals. You can use smaller dimensionals too. We have things called mini dimensionals and that helps you to get into smaller spaces. You can see how small they are compared to these. Um, by the way, these are part of a prize option today. Okay, and then we'll just place this down. Um, I want to do it kind of the same way I did the other one. So I'm looking at the other one as I do this. We'll set that right about there. This flower is just going to go flat and it's going to tuck in right about there. This one's going to go flat. It's also going to go next to this leaf. You guys can see what I'm doing up there, can't you? And then we've got these leaves here. And I think I did it that way. So I'm just going to make sure that it's attached to this leaf here. We're just going to tuck it right under. So it'll go kind of like that. There, now it's attached. You could use a glue dot if you wanted to have something back on the stem. But we're going to just bring this right under like that. And then we're going to have this flower go right next to it over here. And really, we're just, we just want things to kind of peek out, right? And we're not gluing it to this part. There's a part here too, so be careful that you're just gluing it on that bottom closed layer. This will go here. And we're going to attach the leaves to it and they are going to go like, 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 like that. <laughs> Just go like this, Rachel. There, now you can copy it and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, kind of goes like that. And then we'll put adhesive on one more time and we'll tuck it in. No judging. If I don't get it exactly like the original, please don't judge me. <laughs> We're going to bring in the take your pick tool and the champagne rhinestones. Champagne rhinestones have a pink tint to them 
and they match pretty perfectly with the petal pink color. And petal pink is one of the colors that's in the designer paper, if you didn't notice. That is the reason why I chose that color. We're gonna do a small up here. We're gonna do another small up here, kind of tucked into that leaf. Let's do another small. Can I grab it? We're gonna do another small right here. Let's do a medium. So there's three sizes on this, um, this rhinestone sheet, just like our regular rhinestones. There are three sizes. Oh yeah, we need one down here, right in the middle of the O for going. And then when we open up the card, we have to have more than just that one little thing down there. So I'm gonna put another medium up in here. Am I too, too zoomed in still, you guys? I forget, I need to have a tech person here at my house who can zoom in and out for me when I'm doing this. You see how this flower back here has disappeared too, right? So there we have, here, let's open this one up and keep this one, this one closed. There's our open and closed version of that card. I cannot wait to make more of these fun folds. This is really, really, um, an easy type of fun fold. You, you cannot fail. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know. I love making it. Um, so here's Nancy's again. We'll just set that one there. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Karen, for influencing Nancy. Um, what do I wanna tell you about? It is a new month. So as we are, um, if you wanna take a screenshot, you can. Otherwise you can see them on my blog post at five o'clock PM in a little over five and a half hours. Um, again, the link will be in the description of the video. Um, please, by the way, please like, subscribe, give me the thumbs up, that sort of thing. I appreciate that. Okay, so what's going on in Stampin' Up! News? We have um, weekly deals that have um, started. They started last week. Not tomorrow, they change out. So if you're interested in looking at the online store, you go to um, shop products at stampyourartout.com. You click on shop and you can get to the online store. The online store... Um, then you go under specials and you choose weekly deals. And there's in the U S there's like, I want to say there's like nine. I don't know. There's quite a few products that are, I want to say 20% off, um, about that. So check it out. I took advantage of the brush brass butterflies cause I use them so much. So I got me some of those again. Um, also, uh, one thing with the weekly deals is they do change, uh, from market to market. So the weekly deals that are in the U S market might be different from the ones that are in say the French market. So just keep that in mind. Um, hmm. the other thing that's going on is the perfect partners promotion. Basically Stampin' Up! has just released a bunch of dies that match some of the, um, sets that are in the annual catalog. Um, ones that definitely could use some dyes. Um, there's a floral set in there. There's an apple set. Just really fun to take advantage of that. So if you have any one of those sets or you absolutely wanted to get one of those sets and now that the dyes are here, you're like, oh my gosh, totally makes sense. Then grab those up this September because they are, they're exclusive to this month and then they're gone. Um, I want to say that there's a new kit that just got released too. In fact, let's go over to my blog post really quickly, and we're gonna do that before um, we go to the prize drawing, okay? Oh, thank you, Pam. So she appreciates how um, I put the the items on my, my blog post. So here is stampyourartout.com. Um, if you click on my blog, you can get to my blog post and they just start scrolling through the different past um, projects. This was the last project post that I posted that was, um, showcase stamper brenda georgie okay underneath my signature you will find all of the promotions so here's weekly deals you can click there for more information click here to shop um, world card making day event yes that's coming up october 1st so you'll want to click on that to find out more perfect partners you can see the dies there um yay for stamp and storage they got things available in white you guys all that stuff behind me i painted that <laughs> And I'm ready to replace a few of them because they're getting old. So I am ready to shop. Um, branded merchandise. What else? Okay. So there's a new kit. I'm just going to click here. Kits collection. 
in the kits collection they've added a new christmas one here it is it's called christmas gifting kit so it's got tags and gift card holders um, that was available as of this morning i think and then if you keep scrolling there's paper pumpkin information and here's the all-star tutorial so this particular um, tutorial the abigail rose tutorial is the one that we are featuring this month this is my project it kind of stands out like a sore thumb i use the intricate dies on it <laughs> everyone else used colors that were basically part of that uh, suite although you got some blues and stuff in there too but man rachel you really stood out but you'll want to check it out it's a really cool um card and these are the people that i hop with they're all going to be sharing today you're going to want to check it out check out all of our projects that we have okay i'm going to move some things away on my desk here and we're going to bring in prizes last week's prize winners um won tutorials okay and so and i should have done that for today but i think i was on a tight schedule last week anyways the two people that we called out last week, and I'm going to pull up their names. Um, they did not, because I, I think what happened is I didn't see their names after. No, you know what it was? I had to, I had to draw these names after the live was over. So Char Litton from um, Facebook, you won last week. And um, Arlene Miller, you won last week so um so yes so congratulations to the after live winners arlene miller charlotte charlotte arlene you were from the youtube yay arlene um so make sure that you reach out to me and let me know what tutorial you'd like i have a tutorial section on my blog post also rose prouty you haven't chosen your free tutorial yet either from the week before um this week let me bring you down to my desktop here. In fact, you know what? Let's do this first. Let's go back to my blog because I want to show you where you can pick your tutorials. Go under the shop button, scroll down to tutorials, click on tutorials, and here they are. And there's pages of them. So you just click on, you know, keep going through and you pick out which one you want if you're a winner of the tutorials, okay? All right, back to the desktop now. We have blends markers donated by Judy Duncan. Thank you, Judy. And each person that wins today and the after live winners that we pick next week will get to have two sheets of mini dimensionals and your choice of the blends marker packs that are here. We have the colors Magenta Madness, Polished Pink, Cinnamon Cider, and Just Jade. Okay, so let me peek to see who. Trisha Josephs just announced the live winners. Jen Helding and Janet Kay. Jen, we were just chatting on Facebook, what, yesterday or the day before? <laughs> congratulations to you. And Janet Kay, congratulations, yay. Make sure that you reach out to me, by the way, you too. Um, let me know which pack of blends markers you would like. Again, a big thank you to Judy Duncan for donating those prizes. Um, and then I have after live winners. So let me um, tell you who they are. Let's go over to my computer screen so you can see. So from, this one is from Facebook. So Facebook winner from last week, um, last week's lives. Um, oh, Charlotte, did I just announce this name? Hang on a minute, you guys did i mess up oh hang on hang on hang on oh <laughs> i did <laughs> okay well that's news to you guys right yes i messed up because i drew these names and then i forgot to highlight them in red okay so char and aunt arlene you are the winners <laughs> from last week you get the tutorial of your choice <laughs> okay there's where my big mistake was for the day we at least stayed online though didn't we no internet issues today okay so arlene i'm gonna go back to the computer now let me pull this out of the way yes i announced you before you even knew what was going on you're probably going what she called my name last week no 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 these are new winners so char pick which tutorial you like and arlene arlene miller on youtube pick the tutorial and then next week we will have after live winners for the leftover blends and dimensional packs okay 
<laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Hey, Kelly. Hi, Fran. <laughs> thanks for joining in. And um, thanks for your well wishes that you've been giving me and for the thumbs up and all that stuff. I'm going to let you guys go. Next week, we are going to be live again on Wednesday, September 14th. Welcome back to school, all of you um, parents that have kids going back or all of you kids that are watching online and you're back to school and you're skipping school. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's back to school week. Today was the first uh, day of school for my boys. So kind of interesting. It's very quiet in the house. Um, all right. So next week, September 14th. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>